So suppose the next pi bond is formed between two vertical orbitals, that is sideways. And the third bond is formed between two horizontal orbitals, that will also be sideways because these two orbitals which are horizontal, they are also parallel to each other. So once you have head on, the next has to be pi, the third has to be pi and the fourth. You cannot have fourth bond between these two atoms because you do not have fourth p orbital. You have only three p orbitals. That's why you cannot have the fourth one. Hope you understand this. Why the second bond has to be pi. The first one will be sigma. The second can't be sigma because the second can't have head on overlapping. So the second bond is a pi bond. And based upon the previous discussion in the previous lecture, we know that sigma pi bond is formed by unhybridized orbital by a pure p orbital. So for one of the bond you don't require hybridized orbital. So you require hybridized orbital only for the first bond that is sigma bond. So there is one sigma bond between these two carbon atoms and there are two more sigma bonds by, between carbon and these two hydrogens. So this carbon all together is making three sigma bond and one pi bond. For pi bond we don't require hybridized orbital. For sigma bond we do require. So altogether we require three hybridized orbitals. For three hybridized orbitals we have to mix three pure orbitals. One of them will always be S, the other two will be P. So we write it as SP2. So the hybridization state of this carbon is SP2. Now, for those who had, uh, had been learning this first time, this is enough for you. You stop the lecture and you solve rest of them on your own. And after completing this, you match your answer as I will be writing. Don't just sit back and listen. Work out. So I hope you have worked out your answers and now let's match the answer. I'll quickly write the answers, you match it and I'll explain this to you as well after writing the answers. Now if you look at this carbon in this, uh, in this compound, you will find that the carbon is making one sigma bond with hydrogen and with the other carbon it is making three bonds. As we have already seen, the first one will be sigma, the second will be pi, the third will be pi. For pi bonds, you don't require hybridized orbitals, so you will not be looking into pi bonds. We will only look for sigma bonds, lone pair and negative charge. So you will find that this carbon is making two sigma bonds, so you require two hybridized orbitals. To have two hybridized orbitals, you have to mix two pure orbitals. One of them will always be S, the next will be P, so the hybridization state is SP. Clear? I hope it is. Now this is start carbon. If you want to can find the hybridization state of this carbon, this carbon seems to, making, it seems to be making three bonds, as I can see in here. One bond is with this carbon, the other two bonds is with this carbon. The valency of carbon is 4. If you are finding the valency of carbon to be 3, it has to be understood that the fourth valency is fulfilled by hydrogen. So there must be a hydrogen here. Although we haven't shown, but we need to understand this. So to find the number of sigma bonds, there is only one bond between these two carbon. This is the first bond. So this bond must be a sigma bond. Here there are two bonds. The first one will be sigma, the next one will be pi. Here there is only one bond, so this will be sigma. So altogether there are only three sigma bonds for this carbon. For three sigma bonds you require three hybridized orbitals. To have three hybridized orbitals you need to mix three pure orbitals. One of them will always be S, the next two will be P. So we write it as P2, so the hybridization state of this start carbon in this compound. This compound happens to be benzene, you must know this, this is an important compound. Is uh, The hybridization state of carbon in benzene is SP2. If you look down here, oxygen is making two bonds with hydrogen, so you may be tempted to write the hybridization state as SP, and your temptation can be understood if you don't know the electronic configuration. The electronic configuration of oxygen, according to Bohr, if you write uh, mm, the electronic configuration based upon class 10th, uh, uh, class 10th, you will write it as 2, 6. Uh, then uh, you can see the outermost shell has six electrons. Two electrons will be utilized in making two bonds with hydrogen and you will be having four electrons left. Four electrons will exist in forms of two lone pairs. That means oxygen has two lone pairs that will not be shown. But you must know this. Oxygen has two lone pairs when it makes two bonds. 
and those two lone pairs will exist in the same orbital. Now to minimize the electronic repulsion, those two lone pairs have to be kept in a hybridized orbital. So you require four hybridized orbitals, two for the lone pair, two for the sigma bond. Those two, for, for having four hybridized orbitals, you, you need to mix four pure P orbitals. Pure orbitals. One of them will always be S and the rest three will be P. So hybridization state will be sp3. Similarly, the nitrogen, if you write the electronic configuration according to Bohr model, it will be 2 to 5. Nitrogen has 5 electrons in the outermost shell. Three of them will be utilized in making 3 bonds with hydrogen. You will be left with 2. That 2 will exist as one lone pair. This will not be shown, but you need to know that nitrogen has a lone pair. This is must for you. Now you have to look for lone pair, you have to look for negative charge, you have to look for sigma bonds. I can cite three sigma bonds because there are three hydrogens with nitrogen. There's a lone pair and there's no negative charge. So altogether you require four hybridized orbitals, three for negative, uh, three for sigma bonds and one for lone pair. To have those four hybridized orbitals, you need to mix four pure orbitals. One of them will always be S and the rest of them will be P. So it, we'll write it as SP3. Hybridization state will be SP3. If you look for PCL5, now phosphorus happens to be below nitrogen in a periodic table and you must know that in a periodic table in a column, in a vertical column, the electronic configuration is similar. That means, uh, and, and the outermost electron is same for every atom in a column. If nitrogen has five electrons in the outermost shell, phosphorus also has five because phosphorus happens to be below nitrogen in a periodic table. Indeed, the electronic configuration of phosphorus is 285. So phosphorus also have five electrons in the outermost shell. Three of them is utilized to make three bonds with chlorine and two of them will exist as a lone pair. So phosphorus has one lone pair and three one lone pair will make three bonds. So the hybridization state will be sp3 same as ns3. When you move on to PCL5, phosphorus has five bonds already made out of those five outermost electrons. So there is no electron left as a lone pair or anything. So there are five sigma bonds and those five sigma bonds will require five hybridized orbitals and to have five hybridized orbitals you need to mix five pure orbitals. One of them will always be S and four are left. So some of you might have write this as SP4. Now uh, that is uh, not stupidity that may be called as innocence. Now if you haven't studied atomic structure you might have written as SP4 but you need to know that you only have three P orbitals available in any atom at any quantum uh, principal quantum number. You don't have four P orbitals, so you cannot have P4. This is wrong. One of them will be S, the rest of three will be P, and the fourth one will be D, because after P, you have D orbital. So the fifth requirement of fifth orbital will be fulfilled by D. So the hybridization state of PCL5 is written as SP3D. Similarly, in SF6, if you look for the electronic configuration of phosphorus uh, sulfur, Sulfur has atomic number 16, so electronic configuration will be 286. It has 6 electrons in the outermost shell, it is making 6 bonds as well. So all the 6 electrons are utilized in making bond, it does not have any lone pair. So there are 6 sigma bonds, so it will require 6 hybridized orbital and uh, 6 hybridized orbital you will get when you mix 6 pure orbitals. One of them will always be S, the other 3 will be P, that makes it 4 and you require two more and the requirement of two more will be left will be fulfilled by D so the hybridization state will be sp3d2 rest of them I leave you to work out yourself and uh, I have written the answer you match it um, this is how we find the hybridization state of different compounds after having been learned the hybridization and how to find the hybridization state of different, different atoms and different molecules let's talk about the shape or the geometry of an atom at different hybridization state. Now, if we, if we talk about sp2 hybridization, let's take the example of methyl carbocation. Uh, in the last lecture, we already learned that the hybridization, hybridization state of carbon in methyl carbocation is sp2. Now, let's talk in space, how does this exist? In space, methyl carbocation exists like this. The three CH bonds is spreaded in a same plane 
as far away with each other as possible and that is possible in a geometry that is called trigonal planar. In trigonal planar geometry you have bonds at an angle of 120 degree. Now why it is at 120 degree? Uh, in chemical bonding you must have studied BSP or theory. Uh, in case you haven't studied then let me tell you these bonds have electrons and electrons and electrons ripple each other. That means the electron in this bond will ripple the electron of this bond and the electron of this bond similarly will ripple the electron of these two bonds. The idea behind this is this, get electrons should be such, such uh, in space so that the inter-electronic repulsion between these electrons is as less as possible and it has, seen it has been observed experimentally okay, and this is the geometry that corresponds to minimum repulsion. That means when you have three sigma bonds, it has to be placed in trigonal planar geometry so that the electronic repulsion between them is minimum. So when you have sp2 hybridization state, the geometry is trigonal planar. You need to know this if you don't in case. Now this plus charge means empty orbital. Now the empty orbital is placed perpendicular like this to all these three bonds. One of the lobe is above the plane and the other lobe is below the plane in which these three bonds are kept. So the mid, the center of that orbital is in the plane of the board. One of the lobe is above the board and one of the lobe is below the board. That's how this CST plus exists. So this is about sp2 hybridization. In sp2 hybridization, the geometry is triangular planar and the p orbital is perpendicular to that plane. We need to know this before we start resonance. If we talk about sp3, let's talk about methane. In methane, the carbon is making four bonds. All bonds are sigma bonds. So all bonds require hybridized orbital. And altogether, we require four hybridized orbital. Four hybridized orbitals means four pure orbitals has to be mixed. So one of them will be S, the rest of three will be P. So hybridization state is sp3. Now, methane exists in space like this. Now, this is a tetrahedral geometry having bond angle 109 degree 28 minutes. Uh, this geometry looks like this. Now, this is the tetrahedral geometry. Consider all of them to be equal, same bonds. Now, this, this angle is 109 degree 28 minutes. This angle is same, this angle is same, this angle is same. All are symmetrical. Now, this is the structure which offers minimum repulsion in space when you have four bonds. When you have four sigma bonds, this is the structure, this is the shape in which the atom exists. The atom is at the center, uh, making four bonds with four groups like this. This is called tetrahedral geometry. Now, when you have sp3 hybridization, the geometry is tetrahedral. When you have sp2 hybridization, the geometry is trigonal planar. We can also talk about the geometry of sp3d, but we will not. Uh, we will not because uh, carbon has maximum of uh, uh, four uh, valencies. Carbon can make maximum of four bonds. So we don't go beyond hy uh, hybridization sp3 in case of carbon. So in case of carbon, we don't go, we don't have a hybridization state like sp3d. And in organic, we mainly deal with carbon. So we don't happen to deal with sp3d. But in case if we have to, we will see there itself what is the shape of sp3d. Or in the chapter of chemical bonding, we will see this. But as per now, as, as to start resonance, we don't require sp3d as such. In case it will be required, we will see it there and then. So for now, sp2 is tetrahedral planar and sp3 is tetrahedral. We know this much and we are in comfortable position to start with resonance. Remember, resonance is the strongest pillar on which the organic chemistry is lying. So we need to respect this topic and study with lots of respect and we will be giving that respect both in terms of time and in terms of intensity. So resonance, after completing resonance, I tell you, you complete 10% of organic already. So resonance is a thing that needed to be understood in case you want to understand organic chemistry. If you don't understand resonance, this organic will slip off your hand. So when we will start resonance, be very attentive and try to grasp all the points that will be told.